OK, I might just do these questions really, really quickly and just see how it kind of works out. That might be the easiest thing. So I know it's just for part C. When it's talking about the possible coordinates of this point R, such that R lies on L2, um, and PQ equals PR. So let's just quickly sketch what we've got here. We've got two lines, L1 and L2, uh, different vector equations. P is the point with coordinates. Show that Q lies on L1. So Q is over here. Um, is P, do we know where P is? Oh yeah, P is on both of them, you can tell. How do you know, how do you know that P is on both of them? Yeah, the 142. Uh, P is 142, and it's got a 142 here, and it's got a 142 here. So that must mean the point where they intersect each other is P. And then it says, show that Q lies on L1. And then it says, find the possible coordinates of the point R, such that R lies on L2, and PQ is equal to PR. So the two places that it could possibly be is either here or it could be over here. We've got R1 and we've got R2 as those two bits where all of these three things are equal to each other. So I guess all we really need to think about here, um, and I don't need to do part A and part B to do this one, is I just need to think, OK, well, what is the distance PQ? So I'm going to find out the vector P PQ, and then I'll do Pythagoras on that. So have you, has anybody worked out what the vector PQ is? Yeah, it's just Q minus P, so it's just 8, 5, 1. So the length of that line is root 64 plus 25 plus 1, those three squared and added, which is 60, 70, 80, root 90. So now I want the distance between here and here to be 90, OK? What do you think I could call R1 or R2, given that I know it lies on L2? What could its coordinate be if it lies on L2? So a general coordinate is combining this into a single thing. So you've got 1 plus 3 mu, 4 plus mu, and 2. Now, I want to find out the distance between P and R. I want it to be root 90. So to find the distance between P and R, I will find the vector PR by doing R minus P, which is this one minus P. What is this one minus P? P is 142. So it's just 3 mu, mu, 0. And I want the distance, PR, when I take the magnitude, I want it to be root 90. So when I do Pythagoras to this, you get the square root of 3 mu squared, sorry, 3 mu all squared, which is 9 mu squared. So you get 9 mu squared plus mu squared is equal to root 90. So when you square, square both sides, you get 10 mu squared is equal to 90. Mu squared is equal to 9, so mu is equal to plus or minus 3. This will be where mu is equal to 3. This will be where mu is equal to minus 3, or either way around, because it's just the sketch that we've got. So that's just the last stage that we needed for that one. OK? Question 12 was one that you also had asked about as well. I'm actually not going to do question 12. I'm just going to talk to you about what it says here about something being coplanar. Do you know what coplanar means? Yeah. Coplanar co -planar means they are on the same plane, so we need to show that they're not on the same plane as each other. Um, any ideas? If you've got one, two, three, four points, let's imagine that they are on the same plane, A, B, C, and D. Any ideas of how we might be able to show that they're on the same plane, Ishak? Uh, different z yeah, um, it wouldn't necessarily be a different z coordinate. Uh, because that would be imagining that they were on like a horizontal kind of plane. So how else do you think we might be able to show that things are not on the same plane? Yep. Good. You could actually find out the equation of the plane with these three, and then if you substitute that coordinate into the equation of the plane, if it is going to make that equation true, then it is on the plane. If it is not, then it's hovering somewhere else that is not on the plane. So if something is coplanar, you want to find an equation of a plane containing three of the four points, and then investigate 
if the fourth point is on that plane. Okay, you remember how to find the equation of a plane? Yeah. Which way do you think you'd find an equation of a plane for this one? A, B, like the direction of A, B. Yeah, you'd have to do the, what was the name of that type of plane? Do you remember? The M with a P? The one that looks like this, right? The one that's like R equals A plus lambda. Yeah, parametric. Sam was the one that got it last time. I don't want it to be only Sam who remembers this, okay? It's the parametric form because we call the mu and the lambda, we call them the parameters. So it's the parametric form. So you could then find out, does that last point lie in the plane for that one that we've got there? Okay, so we've now got a regular tetrahedron with these vertices. Sorry, I've made a bit of a mess by doing them kind of jug jumbled up here. Um, different vertices that we've got. I'm trying to imagine this. So we've got... This one is the origin, and then we've got B, C, and D. A tetrahedron is a, uh, a shape where all of the sides are triangles, and the fact that it's a regular one means they're all equilateral triangles. Show that the angle between any two adjacent faces of the tetrahedron is arc cos of a third. Do you know what arc cos means? I don't know if I mentioned this to you. Yeah, it means like the inverse cos. It means like inverse cos of a third. So what we're really trying to show is that the cosine of the angle is a third. That's what we're trying to show for any of these two. Now, it's probably quite a lot of work here if they're trying to get it to do between any of the adjacent faces. So we might just do it between like a couple of the different faces that we've got here. Um, right, yeah. You probably could just do it with two of the planes, no, yeah. Now, let me just have a think about how I would do this. So we need to try and find out the angle between two adjacent faces, so we need to come up with some equations of the planes. And to come up with the equations of the planes, we need to try and come up with some of the equations of the normals to some of the planes. So it's not very easy, but I'm going to start off by thinking about, um, let's try and draw on. I'm going to try and find this face here. I'm going to try and find an equation of that plane in the Cartesian form. So it looks like we've got a vector running along here, which is the, the position vector of C, which is 1, 1, 0. So that vector is 1, 1, 0. And this vector running along here is 1, 0, 1. When I'm trying to find out the equation of a normal, what do I want to be true if I'm trying to find something that is normal to both of these here like this? If I'm going to call this n, what do you know about this n vector and those other two vectors? Perfect. It's perpendicular to both of them. If it's perpendicular to both of them, what else do we know? The scalar dot product should be 0. We know that n dotted with 1, 0, 1 is equal to 0 from this one. We also know that n dotted with 1, 1, 0 has got to be equal to 0. Now, if we call n x, y, z, we would have here x plus z is equal to 0. And we would have x plus y is equal to 0. Now, you can either put these in the simultaneous equation solver, or you could just say to yourself, do you remember what we said if we were trying to do these? How you could solve these ones without using the calculator? Because there's going to be a multiple. Pardon? You eliminate one of them, but we can't eliminate one of them because we've got three of them. I guess you could eliminate one of them in some ways, but at some point you need to. Yeah, you you need to good. You, at some point you need to assume something. So you could say, let z equal one, which means that x would be equal to minus one, which means that y would be equal to one. So our normal vector is going to be x, y, z. Let's just check that works with both of them. If I dot that with this, yep, I get 0. If I dot that with this, yep, I get 0. Okay? So that must mean the equation of this red plane is going to be r dot n equals a dot n. Remember that from before? Now, a position on a plane, which is the easiest position to use on this plane? The origin, because it's just going to be 0. So we know this right-hand side is just going to be 0. And our r dot n is just going to be r dotted with this. But in Cartesian form, can anybody think, how do we go from Cartesian form of this? 
minus x plus y plus z. Okay, that's the Cartesian equation of this plane that we've got here. Um, I probably don't even need that, actually. I don't even know why I've done this, because we're only trying to find the angle between them, aren't we? So actually, this was the thing that I'm interested in here. Yeah, so now what I need to do is think about doing that again, and this time I'm going to do it with this plane here and here, and I'm going to have, I can't really draw it on the board, but some kind of vector that's coming off from both of them, which I'm going to call, well, I've already called that one n, I probably should have called it n1. So I'll call the other one n2. And I'm going to do the same process again. So this time, I've got uh, n2 dotted with this vector. What does it say that it was for b? I've just scrolled on. Is it 110? 011. 011. 011. That is equal to 0. And we also know that it's going to be the other one again that we've just used here, which is the 101. So this one tells me that y plus z is equal to 0. And this one tells me that x plus z is equal to 0. So if we let z equal 1, x is equal to, and y is equal to, so that must mean that n2 is equal to minus 1, minus 1, 1. So what I'm really trying to do, I didn't need to find that Cartesian. If I'm trying to find out the angle between those two planes, what do we use to find the angle between two planes? Uh, cosine. cosine of the angle between the two planes is equal to? And if, it's going to be um, it's going to be acute anyway, but that's fine. So when we actually then put this all in here, n one dotted with n two, so it's this one dotted with this one, well, minus one 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 dotted with. Hang on a second, where's n two gone? Here, this one here, minus one minus one one, all over the modulus of this times the modulus of this. What's the modulus of one of them? Root three. So it's root three times root three. So we get 1 minus 1 plus 1, which is 1 over 3. So you get that cosine of theta is a third. So theta is arc cos a third. So it's pulling together lots and lots of different ideas that we've got here. Um, and did you notice me when I started this question that I didn't just go, you just do this? Did you see me kind of like hesitating a bit and being like, oh? probably should have looked at this before the lesson started. So if you see me hesitating before something, then obviously this is something that you need to stop and think. It's not just something that I'm saying you should just know how to do this. It's one where you should pause and you should say to yourself, what am I looking for? How am I going to find this thing that I'm actually looking for that we've got here? OK? Any questions on what we did on that and why we did any of that stuff? No? So I suppose what I should have thought, if I'm trying to find the angle between two planes, I need the normals. If I need the normals, actually this question completely breaks down. Stop thinking of it as a shape and just start thinking of it as two planes and just find the equation of a normal to a plane, the equation of another normal to a plane, and then we go from there. Okay? Um, so I think I might not do all of question 14, but we might just talk about the idea of it. So it says a flagpole is supported by three guide ropes which are attached at a point 20 metres above the base of the pole. The ends of the ropes are secured at points with the position vectors, blah, 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 um, relative to the base of the pole, where the units are meters. The flagpole will be stable if the angles between the adjacent guide ropes are all greater than 15. Determine whether the flagpole will be stable, showing you're working clearly. OK, so we've got a pole here. And at the bottom of the pole, it's implying that that is the origin, because it says that these three position vectors here it says they're relative to the base of the pole. And the guide ropes are attached at a point 20 meters above the base of the pole. So this distance between here and here is 20. What do you think this coordinate might be of where the guide ropes are being attached? If we've just considered that the base of the pole is the origin, what do you think that the top of this thing here is that's 20 meters? Pardon? 20, 0, 0 would be uh, 20 and across. Sorry? No, it's not that one either. Zero, zero, it's zero, zero, 0020. You said zero, 0020, zero. I think. I think that's what you said. No, so it's the Z, the Z one's going to be the one that is going up here. 
yes, I believe that's probably what it's talking about. That's how, that's unless I've made a, a mistake here. So I should think that Z will be corresponding to the height above. Uh, Just we tend to say, like, if we have a floor, we would tend to say that the third axis would be the thing that is going up. And then you've just got these three ends of rope. So the rope might be going to here. The rope might be, maybe I'll do these in a different color so it's clear I'm talking about a rope this time. So the rope might be going to this point. The rope might be going to this point, And the rope might be going to this point that we've got here. This one is 12 minus 5, 3. This one is minus two, six, five. Whoops, I've missed one out, which is zero, eight, two. Now, what do you think that this is actually trying to ask us to think about doing if we're trying to find the angles between the adjacent ropes? What am I, what's, what, what's the, the vector thing it's asking me to do? Find the angle between what? The angle between lines, OK? So it's the angle between lines. <laughs> so all I need to do is find out what is this vector what is this vector and what is this vector here? You could call them, because they're different directions, you could call this direction one, direction two, direction three. And all you need to do is find out the angles between those, those different directions and show that all of them are 15. So you need to do D1 with D2, D1 with D3, and D2 with D3. So there's three of them and show that all of them have an angle of less than 15. Just very quickly, how would I find out the vector D3? Or can you tell me what the vector D3 is just off the top of your head? Good, 0, 8, minus 18. I might as well actually just do this last part. 0, 8, minus 18. Uh, D2 is going to be minus 2, 6, minus 15. And D1 is 12, minus 5, minus 17. They've all just had 20 subtracted from those components. And then you would use what formula to find out the angle between these things? The dots of the, of the, of the D vectors over the modulus. So when does it change? When is it not cos theta? When it's a line in a plane, you use sine theta. And what do you have to do when it's a si if it's the line in the plane? You have to use modulus around it just to make sure you get the right kind of angle that it is that we've got there. OK? Great. Does that help?